Woo, good morning, guys. Hey, we start every service. The men go outside and we pray over the service and our families. It's part of uh, raising up godly men and creating godly leaders as men. So, uh, men, let's step outside and we'll pray. Ladies, if you've got a prayer request and you want us to pray over that, get with uh, one of the guys here. Just raise your hand. We'll take it out there and uh, we'll pray over all of that.
Yeah, we did it at Easter last year. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Morning, morning, morning. I see Miss Betty waving. Hey, uh, Anybody, if you got any kids that uh, want to come up here and sit, we've got plenty of chairs up here. If they want to be involved in the worship service, they're more than welcome to. But there's plenty of chairs up here if they if they want to come up and sit. First thing we want to do this morning, I need uh, Miss Sadie Williams to come up here, please. <laughs> come on up here, sunshine. You're not in trouble. Yet. No, yeah. ma'am, you're not in trouble at all. Birthday spanking. Come right over here where, you can, where everybody can see you. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be more embarrassing. Miss Sadie had a birthday this week. Woo! I think Jeremy said she was eight going on 18. <laughs> So what we're going to do first thing this morning, we're going to have Jake lead us in a happy birthday song. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sadie. Happy birthday to you. And many more. I've never seen her embarrassed, but her face was kind of red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, we'll stand with us this morning. If you got a songbook close to you, turn it to page 10. We're going to start out with Just Over in the Glory Land. Well, I will home prepared where the saints abide. Just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, there with the mighty host I'll stand, just over in the glory land. I am on my way to those mansions fair, just over in the glory land. There to sing God praise and His glory share. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land. I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory 
in this next song you might slow down after that one i'm telling you that's gonna be tough <coughs> this song's called red letters There I was on death row Guilty in the first degree Son of God hanging on a hill Hell was my destiny Crowd was shouting crucify could have come from these lips of mine Dirty shame was killing me Take a miracle to wash me clean Then I read the red letters And the ground began Prison walls started falling. I became a free man that day. Felt like lightning hit my vein. My dead heart began to beat. Breath of God filled my lung. The Holy Ghost awakened me. Yeah, the Holy Ghost awakened me. When I read the red letters and the ground began to shake, prison walls started falling, and I became a free man that day. 
song makes me want to holler i'm telling you hey while chance is on his way up i'll hit it we've got a lot of guests in here so we've got um buckets in each corner if you feel like you need to give to the lord um just drop your drop whatever in the bucket and it'll go wherever it needs to go we also have three restroom options total there's one back here in this corner climate controlled real nice there are two rooms outside they are actually pretty nice today it's weather's nice so uh, we've got this one back here for the ladies and children. Men, we can step right out here. It's all you. I hate to move. You're just now getting it out. <laughs> hey, I'm in. Sounds good. Hey, guys, if you haven't noticed, we are getting ready to move, okay? Now, one thing before we talk about that is if you have a senior who is going to high school, college, whatever it may be, and you want them to be recognized, I need you to get with Miss Renee or Miss Holly Joe. Will you all raise your hands? There's one. There's the other. All right. See them if you got a senior so we can make sure we get their information, guys, uh, so we can recognize them for senior day. Now, let's talk about moving. Y'all okay with that? Amen. All right. Woo. We will have one more, one more service in here. One more. And then the birds can have it back. Yep. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. I need y'all to, to listen, okay? This next week is going to be full construction mode over there. All right? So... We are going to be working over there, and we need some help getting it done. If you are free, available at all, Mr. Jerry gets there at 9 o'clock. He's got to feed horses and take care of his place too, okay? Guys, if you can only be there to help him hold stuff, we need you to be there to help him hold stuff, okay? We'll feed you lunch, but get over there. Let's help get the last details knocked out so we can get moved in. And here's what's going to happen. This Wednesday, we're going to be working. Next Sunday, we'll be here, and then that week, this is in two weeks. The whole week is going to be spent moving stuff that way. Wednesday night, we'll be here. It'll be quick eating. I'm going to ask kitchen team for sandwiches and chips. And we're going to eat, and we're going to start moving, okay? And our teams, listen to your team leaders. If you're on the children's team or you're on the kitchen team or you're part of the worship team, I know they're kind of all right here around here in media, all right? Listen to your team leaders. They're going to be sending you dates about what days we're going to be doing stuff. If you want to help with any of that, reach out to me, okay? Because we'll have cleaning days we'll be announcing too. Guys, it's all hands on deck. All right? We're going to be in there for Easter, and we're going to have a great time. And if you can't tell, look around. We need to get in there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Little tight quarters, okay? That's a good thing. That's a blessing. All right? God has given us the ability to do that. And then here's what's going to happen. We're just moving the essentials. The last two weeks of April, everything that is not essential what we have for special events and stuff, we'll move it those last two weeks, and we'll be out here by the end of April. I love you guys. I need your help. I'm asking you. I need your help. Watch Facebook for dates. Watch your team leaders. Talk to them about when they're going to be helping, and let's get her done, okay? Now, listen. I want to read something to you. A lady told me the other day, said, we, gotta, we can't forget how God has blessed us. We got a lot going on, but we need to make sure we remember to praise him. Psalms 95 says this, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise 
to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is great and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. In his heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Guys, when we come into his presence, when we come together, when we're at home with our families, he wants us to praise him and thank him for all the blessings he's given us. Guys, he's given us a ton of blessings here at Grover Cowboy Church. And I heard on Caleb earlier, it said that, uh, I didn't know this. You might have known this. Lester, did you know this? The louder to sing, the louder you sing, the better you sound. Really? Yes. That's a true fact. It's a true fact. I don't know about that. Depends on the voice. Yeah, it depends. There's always one. The louder you sing, the better you sound. What's that? Oh, eggs. Sorry, Miss Amy eggs. said I got to make sure I have eggs. Y'all had this all going in the right direction. Eggs? Yeah. We need eggs for Easter over here in the blue box. Y'all make sure y'all bring some eggs. But until then. Sing loud. Let's stand up and sing loud to God. Amen? All right. All right. This song's not going to be in your book, but you've heard it. Jake's going to lead us in it. Right? Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just checking. All right. The song's All My Hope. I try to sing loud. Sing with us. I've been held by the Savior. I fell fire from above. I've been down to the river. I ain't the same. The prodigal return. No. Stranger to the prison, I've worn shackles and chains. I've been freed and forgiven. I'm not going back. I've never been the same. And all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone And all my sins are forgiven And I've been washed by the blood There's a kind of thing that just breaks a man Breaks him down to his knees. God, I've been broken more than a time or two. Then he picked me up and he showed me what it means to be a man. And all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God.
Amen. Good job, Jake. All right. This next song is going to be on page one. We all know it, and we expect everybody to sing with us. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Loud. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. Gracious Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning, Lord, just thanking you, Lord, for 
everything you do for us, Lord, all your blessings that you give us each day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity just to be here in your house this morning, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's here, all the visitors. We appreciate them coming. We welcome them back. And, Lord, just bless them, Lord, during the service today. Bless anybody here, Lord, that don't know you as their Savior, Lord. If Just let something that chance may say, Lord, just touch their heart, Lord, that they would accept you this morning. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, kids, you are dismissed to class. Folks, as always, you are welcome to uh, keep your kids with you. I think there is a, they can learn in class. They also get to learn from watching mom, dad, and grandma and grandpa, too. But I tell you what, when we move into this new building, it looks like our kids are growing here. We're going to need some help with teachers and everything else. So uh, I would love to see some of you guys stepping up to help with that, being involved in that. We love to see uh, husbands and wives team up and do that together. I think uh, couples that minister together, uh, I, we just see growth beyond belief in their families. So pray about that. Look at doing that. It'd be a great idea. Also, all right, so we're going to be talking about something today I know all of y'all are going to like. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and turn into Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 17. All right, Ephesians 5, verse 17. All right, so let me ask you something. How many of y'all can still remember the words of songs that you sang as a kid or in high school? Good or bad? No comment. I hear you. Have you ever thought about why you can do that? Have you ever thought about why you still remember those songs in detail? Uh, y- y- we could go through a lot of things. A lot of it's because you remember joy, right? You had a great time that night that song was playing. Uh, you were out with friends. There was excitement. There was an event you were at, maybe, that it just caused it to stick in your head. Uh, just great memories that come from that, okay? Music has a way of bringing out memories. Guys, that's scientific. I want you to know that. That's not just something out of the air. It's scientifically proven that music can actually cause us to have physical and spiritual and mental react- reactions, okay? I read this uh, article in Psychology Today. And I'm no scientist. This could be the worst magazine known to mankind for psychiatrists. I don't know. All right? But they ha- it, it, it sounded good, made sense to me, okay? So Psychology Today says this. It says that music releases neurotransmitters such as dopamine associated with reward. Okay? Yeah. It's kind of where you get dope from. It is. Because what happens when you, you have a great time or you're, uh, you listen to music, you, maybe uh, foods that you eat, okay, drugs, anything that causes your body to have a reaction usually releases what's called dopamine, all right? And dopamine gives you this feeling of excitement. It gives you a feeling of relaxation. It just is a cheerful feeling, okay? Here's what else it does. Music also will evoke not only emotion but also memories, okay? So it is a proven fact that when you listen to music, the part of your brain that activates for memories and association goes into ultrasonic speed. It just fires it right up. So when you listen to music, it takes you back to other times that you've heard it. The music gives you association. Here's something else. It creates a group reaction. It causes you to feed off each other. How many of y'all ever been to a concert? Recently, we were at a George Strait concert. I'm going to tell you something. That place got so loud, when that guy walked off the stage, I thought my eardrums were going to burst. It was pretty amazing. I was singing songs I didn't even know the words to, but I was singing them because other people were singing them, okay? Here just recently, y'all realize Arkansas Razorbacks beat Gonzaga in an upset, right? Okay, me and my family, we went out, we went axe throwing, and then we turned around, and we went to Buffalo Wild Wings. I am not a big basketball fan. Like, I'll watch it. I like the Razorbacks, okay? But I'll tell you something. We went to Buffalo Wild Wings, and that game was going on. And before I knew it, I'm hollering at refs. All right? I'm calling the hogs every three minutes with all the rest of the drunks. Okay? I was all caught up in it. And I don't, look, I know basketball. I've played it, but I'm no expert. Okay? 
but I got caught up in the moment. The, the, the game, the excitement, the calling the hogs, man, that's just got you, got you all caught up in it right there. I was in the middle of it, okay? Music does the same thing. Guys, it creates identity and everything else. Here's the point of this. I'm not just going on for no reason. We have been created and formed for music to create a reaction in us physically, psychologically, and spiritually. Do you agree with that? Okay. We have been formed and knitted together to create a physical, a psychological, and a spiritual reaction to music. In whose likeness are we created? God. Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image of God. He created him. Male and female, he created them. So if music gives us a reaction on all those levels of excitement and joy, and we're created in the image of God, isn't it likely for me to assume that God has the same reaction? Okay, let me try it again because I only got like three head nods. If, we, if music creates a reaction in us of excitement and joy and just togetherness, and we're created in the image of God, isn't it likely that we can assume that God has the same reaction? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to take it a step further. Think of your reaction... When you watch your kids or your grandkids sing as a group, whether at a school function, at church, or anything else, how does your chest feel? Woo! That's my kid up there. He's the one kicking stuff off the stage. You know, that's okay. We get proud to see our kids come together and sing, don't we? And then you start asking questions. Where did he get that voice? I don't have that voice. But we're proud of them. We have a reaction because of that. Guys, God has the same reaction. When he sees us, sees us come together and praise him and sing and worship him, when he sees us driving down the road, praising him and singing to him and thanking him, he has the same reaction. I told you before, this Bible is not rocket science. We just got to learn to apply it. Amen? So here's my goal. We've been talking about the roots, getting back to our roots, the roots of our church. Worship and praising God is one of those. It is. Okay? It's just part of who we are. It's the basics of what we do, but we don't pull that out of our hat. It's biblical. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about why we praise God and how we praise God. All right? Now, I know I told you to turn to Ephesians 5. Just stay right there, okay? In Colossians 3... Verse 16, I'm going to read this to you, and then we're going to go to Ephesians 5. Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. He literally tells us to sing, to have spiritual songs in our heart. Look at Ephesians 5 now with me. Ephesians 5, verse 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. I want you to notice something right there. My Bible has a comma. Thought doesn't end. Be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So here's the thing. Guys, when it says you're filled with the Spirit, it says be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. The thought never, thought, never stops. If you are filled with the Spirit, it says that we should be praising God. And God says to do that through song and worship. 
I'm not reading that wrong. I don't believe. I don't think there's any other way to read it. Okay? So we're supposed to praise God through, if, we, if we're filled with the Spirit, and God has ordained us to praise and worship Him. Okay? The Spirit is our helper. Amen? God says, do this. God says, praise and worship Him through songs and hymns and psalms, which is a whole book of songs. If we're supposed to praise him, then the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, who was sent to be your helper and to remind you of God's word, which is saying right here, and to help you complete God's word in your life, is inside of you crying out, sing and praise Jesus. So your whole being, your whole body should be wanting to praise God because he said do it that way. Now, I truly believe this when I say this. If you are a saved human being and the Spirit of God is living inside of you, everything about you should want to praise Him. Now, I'm not saying that you're supposed to get up and start a band. Okay? I'm not saying that you have to do that. I am saying that you should want to praise Him, to thank Him for everything He's done for you. That may be in your car going down the road. It may be at work when everybody's listening. It doesn't matter. It could be at church when we come up here. We are to call to praise him. James 5.13 says this, If anyone among you suffering, let him pray. If anyone is cheerful, let him sing praises. That's what God called us to do. Now, here's the thing. Anytime you get in any subject like this, and and part of this is people don't feel like they're good at something. They make excuses not to do it. Okay? Amen? Don't, don't, isn't that what happened? If somebody asks you to do something and, you, and you're not any good at it, and you're like, man, I, I just don't do that very well, you'll make excuses to get out of it. We do the same thing as Christians. Here's what we say. Excuse number one, big one. Well, I worship and praise God through my actions. Sounds very spiritual when we say that. No, that's called obedience, okay? I'm not talking to anybody. I had this thing planned out for a couple weeks ago. If you say, I worship and I praise God through my actions, no, that's called obedience to your father and master in heaven. That's not praising him. That's following what he's told you to do. That's doing what you're called to do. That's obedience. That is not praise and worship. That is not thanking him for everything he's given you. That is not praising him for saving your soul from hell. That is doing what you've been told to do. That's obedience, guys. Praise and worship is Psalm 6930. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Psalm 95, 1 through 4. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Look what it said. Sing. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Aren't y'all thankful he said that? Joyful noise. Doesn't mean you got to be perfect, right? All right. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. So, we do not praise and worship him through our actions. We're obedient to him through our actions. We praise and worship him through song and through worship of just giving him the glory in front of people. Second thing I, I hear all the time. I show my thanks by coming to church. You say, well, I ain't never heard nobody say that. I have in a lot of different ways. They never say it just like that. But a lot of people say, well, I, I do thank God. That's why I come to church. That's why I tithe. Well, you should do both of those. I hope you are. Those are biblical. They're also obedience. God didn't call you to praise him by coming to church. He doesn't want payment from you for what he's done for you. That's why we call it grace. Meaning that he saved you freely. It was a gift. He doesn't want payment for, for the things he's done for you. You're not ever going to be able to pay him back for all the things he does for you and your family. Okay? So don't try to pay him back by coming to church. Don't try to pay him back by giving money. I hope you do that out of obedience because God has called you to do that. 
But when you say, I praise God, it is in song. It is in worship. It is in, in, in standing and saying, God, thank you so much for everything you've given me. It's by singing psalms in your heart. It's by praising him going down the road or wherever else you're at. That is praise and worship. Guys, he doesn't want a payment. This is, listen to this, Psalms 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exults and with my song I give thanks to him. You hear that? With my song I give thanks to him. Psalm 68, 4. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exult before him. Guys, we're supposed to praise his name through song. And here's the thing, though. I've been here, and I've been where your thoughts are right now. I guarantee you there's too many people here that are not somebody sitting here thinking. One is, you probably came in here today, and you said, I never do understand why we sing before church. Well, I hope I answered that. Two is this. You're probably sitting here today, and you're going, still not going to do it. I'm not going to sing today. Nobody can tell me what to do. Because you know what? I've been there before. I come to church with these expectations that are in my mind of what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to go to church and how I'm supposed to worship God. Listen to somebody who's been in your seat. Stop being hard-headed. Praise and worship is not about you. It's about God. It's about Him. It was never about you. It was never about me. Look, I'm a terrible singer, and I know it. My mama told me so. I'm very aware of it. Y'all thought you, uh, y'all, I, I used to have family send me messages. I used to worship up here with the worship team, and then they booted me out because I got too many of them. Y'all thought, I mean, I used to have family send me messages. I didn't know you sang. I don't. I turned my mic off. <laughs> the worship team's like, and thank God. Because he threw me off every time he opened his mouth up there. Okay? Guys, it's not about me. It's not about my singing ability. It's not about your singing ability. It was never about that. It was about singing to God and saying, God, thank you. It was about singing to him so he could have the same reaction that you have when you see your kids sing at the, the choir or at school or anything else. Think about the, the, how your chest blows out and you're so, you have so much pride in your heart. You're going, hey, that's my nephew. That's my grandson. That's my granddaughter. That's my, that's my daughter up there. Y'all see that one singing up there? That's mine. You know what? God does the same thing. His heart is blown up, his chest is blown out, and he's going, those are my children right there. And they're singing praises, and they're worshiping because I have given them everything they need. I have given them my own son so they can be saved from their sins and spend an eternity in heaven, and they're praising me because of it. His heart, his chest are blown out in excitement and joy because we were made in his image. And it works for us. I guarantee you it works for him. God has knit us together for praise and worship and thankfulness to him. And daddy, there's a cancer in our Christian homes and churches right now. And here's what it is. We've got a bunch of daddies who are big and strong and tough. And they stand there and they be very masculine men. I'm not singing with that choir. Y'all laughing, but you know it's true. I ain't trying to hurt your feelings. I'm telling you, it starts with you. You should be the loudest one in your family, no matter how good or how bad you sound. Hey, y'all should have figured it out by now. I don't cut you men no slack. And I hope you don't cut me any slack. Because when you see me doing something wrong with my family, 
I hope you step up and you call me out so that I make sure I toe the line as well. But I ain't going to cut you no slack on this either. I'm not here to hurt your feelings. I'm not here to stomp on your toes. I'm here to tell you what the Bible says. And the Bible says you are to praise and worship God in song. Guys, and people are watching. In Acts 16, Acts 16, let me find this real quick. Verse 25, listen to this. Paul and Silas are in jail. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. I don't believe there's anything in this Bible that was put here by accident. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Your family is listening to you, parents. They're watching you. They're watching you when you're at home, and you know you can't figure out how to pay the bills that week. They're watching you go to church, and they're either watching you sit there and fold your arms, or they're going to watch you praise Jesus no matter what happens. They're watching you when you're at home and you just lost your job. And they know it's the saddest day to you, and your heart is broken, your mind is being shoved in with all this junk that is just cluttering it up, and you're frantic about life. But they see you when you stop at church Sunday morning, and you praise God. Or when you turn the radio on at the house, and you just give thanks to God right then and there. They're watching you. Just like those prisoners were watching Paul and Silas. We want generations of believers to be raised up in this community. We better start praising and worshiping God. I saw this wonderful video. I, I hope it's true. Like, Guys, I know you can't believe everything you see on the internet. But I saw a church in Ukraine. In the midst of being bombed and missiles landing and their families dying, the church came together and sang and praised Jesus. I pray that's exactly what they're doing. Because that example has reached the world. Let alone reach their children that in the midst of the worst event known to their country and their families, they're still singing praises and thanking God for the blessings they do have. So where's your heart? Now this is where it applies. Where's your heart about song and praise? About praising him through song, about worshiping him through song, about saying thank you through song. See, look, it, you can come to church every Sunday. You can come on Wednesdays. You can come put up 500 two-by-fours over there. It doesn't make a hill of beans if you don't take God's word and apply it to your life. Because I guarantee you there are going to be some people in hell that have put up some two-by-fours on churches. There are going to be some people in hell that have sat in church every Sunday and drank coffee with every pastor and deacon they ever had in a church. It's not what it's about. What it's about is taking this word right here, applying it to your life, and coming to realize that he is your savior. He is your master and your king. So where is your heart on song and praise? Because singing to God, praising him, is biblical. And your body reacts to it. Your mind reacts to it. And your soul reacts to it just like God. So dad, make a commitment. You need to make a commitment right now that when I come to church, when I'm with my family at home, I'll praise God through song. Not because I'm good at it, but because God called me to do it. Mom? Mom? And I know some of you are out there are the only parents in the house. Step up to it. Lead your family. Praise God every turn 
of the way. Grandparents, fill the gap. Very serious. I understand you got your, your grandparents and you got grandchildren with parents who are not praising God. They're not singing to him. You know what? You need to fill the gap. Take advantage of the time you do have with them and show them that it's okay for an old bearded, hairy old man or an old lady who can barely get the voice out to praise Jesus. Show them what it means to give thanks to God. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to do right now. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to bow your heads and commit for God to do that. I mean, very simply. I want you to, right where you're at, I want you to just realize that you're, you can have a conversation with God where you're sitting. And commit to God that you are not going to do it the way you want to do it, but you're going to do it the way He asked you to do it. The way He showed us in, our, in His Word when He says, greet each other with psalms and hymns. And songs of praise. He said in Ephesians 5. Be filled with the Spirit. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Giving thanks always. And for everything to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, you have the ability to do that right now. Do it out of reverence to God, submitting to who he is as your master and your father in heaven. Say, God, I just, I want to raise my family. I want to be an example to the people around me. I want to be an example to my coworkers. I want to be an example to the people I meet on the streets. I want to be an example to the person at the gas station when I'm pumping gas. Let me praise you. Let me do it humbly. Well, let, not let me hide my voice that you gave me to give you thanks. May I praise you wherever I'm at and worship you. Being thankful for what you have blessed me with day in and day out. And if you're sitting here this morning and you're looking in, at your, your own life and you're going, hey, look, I don't. I, 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 just, I just need help. Maybe you're just at a point in your life where you realize, I, I need help. I need help to actually understand what God wants me for, wants for my life. I need help understanding who God is and, what Jesus, and who Jesus is and what he's done for me. Let me just tell you real quick. God sent his son, Jesus, to this earth to die for your sins. The sins are all everything you've ever done wrong in your life. The things you've done against God that keep you separated from him, from having a relationship with him. The things like lying and stealing and cheating. All the things that you know were in against God's will. Jesus Christ was punished and died for those sins. Then three days later, he conquered death. He arose and he's in heaven right now beside God. And he's sitting there waiting on you. To make a decision to live for him. And to give your life to him. And folks, I'm going to tell you, I'm not here as a doomsday reporter. I'm just going to tell you, time's running out. The Bible tells us that. There will be only a limited amount of time to stop and say, I want to live for God. I want to give my life to Him. So I want to invite you just to do that right now. Because God says that if you will stop and say, I believe in Jesus Christ, as Romans 10 tells us, I believe in my heart that He died for my sins. And I confess with my mouth. Confess, meaning that you will say and admit that He is Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and repent of your sins saying, I know I did wrong, and I want to turn from those sins and live for you, you will be saved. And we do that through a conversation with God called prayer. So if your head's bowed and you don't have that relationship with God, I want to ask you right now, if you would, just let's just talk to God, and I'll help you do it. Dear Lord, I come to you, and I want to ask you, Lord, to just, just forgive me of all my sin. Lord, I know your son Jesus died on the cross for me. I know he took the punishment I deserved. Lord, will you save my soul? Will you save my soul, Lord? And let me spend an eternity in heaven with you. If 
you'll say that prayer to God and you truly mean it. He said he is sure to forgive you. And here's my role in this. If you gave your life to Christ and you just prayed and asked him to come into your life and to save your soul, my job is to show you what you're supposed to do next. So if you did that, I want to ask you if you would just to look up at me. That's the only reason you're looking at me is that you just ask Christ to save your soul. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take God's word and I'm going to show you what God says is next in your life and how to live it and become the Christian that you're called to be. Anybody, let me see you. If I'm missing you, raise, raise your hand. All right. So here's what I think we ought to do. You can go ahead and look up. I don't think we should uh, ever preach about praise and worship without ending it with praise and worship. So I asked uh, my brother Arnold up here to lead us one final song. Let's stand up and be examples to our kids. Let's make God have a reaction to music that we have too as he sees his children worship. How 
great thou art. How great thou art. When Christ shall come, we shall of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim how great how great thou art then sing my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sing my soul my Savior God to thee How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. That's awesome. Let's bow our heads and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, just thank you for this wondrous day, Lord. We come here to praise you, Father. Lord, we just give you thanks and uh, give you the praise, Father. We ask you to be with us the next few weeks, Lord, just uh, to keep you first in everything that we do, Father. Thank you for our visitors, Lord. We ask them all to come back, Lord. We just thank you and give you praise, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>